Today on TFB TV, we're talking about the best deal for a silencer for your AR-15. You guys may remember that video that I did maybe a little over a year ago at Silencer Co., right? We were in the basement. We did a test where we got the same AR-15. We got the same can, but one 5.56 can and one 308 can. We shot the same ammo through the gun and through both cans and we metered the results. To my surprise, the 5.56 specific can was actually quieter. There's yet another reason to pick up a 5.56 can over a 308 can if you're going to be shooting more AR-15, M16, M4, whatever. I was frankly surprised to find out, and a huge difference. I mean, four decibels is, is quite a significant difference. Yeah, it, it's, decibels are kind of a funny thing because they're so tiny, but we saw that that metered about four decibels less than this, but general um, audiologist consensus is it takes about four decibels to six decibels for someone, for the average human ear to say, assuming the same waveform, just a higher uh, pressure, higher decibel, it takes four to six decibels for someone to start maybe noticing. I bought a 5.56 specific can, the Surefire SOCOM 5.56 Mini. I was that impressed by the results. Not only can you get a quieter suppressor, but it'll also be smaller than the louder and heavier and more expensive and larger 308 version of that same can. As another example, let's take one of my favorite cans. Indeed, one of the golden children of the gun industry, the Justin Bieber of the suppressor business, the Dead Air Sandman S. rugged, quiet, compatible with a shit ton of calibers, and good looking to boot. But what if I told you that you could get a suppressor just as durable, but smaller and quieter? Oh yeah, not to mention almost 200 bucks cheaper. It sounds too good to be true, but it is true. We're talking about the Sierra 5 today on TFB TV. It's half an inch shorter than the Sandman S, two and a half ounces lighter than the Sandman S, but quieter. Sandman S has five baffles, the Sierra 5 has six Stellite baffles. The Sandman S will set you back 849 bucks from Silencer Shop, but the Sierra 5 is just 699 and it includes a muzzle device and it includes a hub compatible mount, either Xeno or Chemo. We'll talk about Xeno versus Chemo in just a second and which one you might want to pick, but before we get there, let's talk about the Sierra 5 generally. Again, it uses Stellite baffles. That's the same material as the baffles in the Sandman series. The Sandman's well known as one of the most durable cans around and it uses that same material. And not only are we talking about a suppressor made out of the same materials as an Area 51 Alien Anal Probe, but we're also talking about frickin' lasers. This suppressor is fully laser welded. It's got a black Cerakoted and knurled stainless tube. Knurling, that's that little checkering on there for you guys that didn't graduate fourth grade. It's tough enough to be full auto rated and with no barrel length restrictions. What that means, some suppressors have barrel length restrictions. 5.56 five, mil, it's a pretty high pressure round. Shorter barrels can absolutely destroy a blast baffle and a silencer or split a tube or simply can't take full auto. For the Sierra 5, no sweat. It's also one of the most versatile cans out there for mounting and accessorizing on different firearms. It uses hub compatible mounting, meaning that you can unscrew the ass end of that suppressor and use other hub compatible dead air mounts and adapters, as well as other manufacturers who also use the same hub adapter footprint. These will all work with the Sierra 5. Plus, the front cap's compatible with the Sandman E-Brake and Dead Air R-Series front caps. The Sierra 5, lighter, cheaper, smaller, quieter. One. There is a catch. It's in 5.56 only, if you didn't pick that up already. 
But in my opinion, there's absolutely no reason to get a Sandman if you're only going to use 556 in whatever suppressor you get. It works great with 5.7 mil also. Here it is with SB193, that subsonic 5.7 millimeter ammo that will actually punch through soft armor. Totally weird. All right, now I'll stop shooting it at steel. You hear it thumping the berm. As you can tell, this is a really quiet can. I said it in the beginning of the video, boys, that's the trade-off. If you get a 5.56 specific can, it's gonna perform better than a can with a bigger hole, hot dog down the hallway effect, right? I think that's what they call it in science. Now you guys have seen the Dead Air Sierra 5 in a number of my videos over the past couple of months, and man, do you guys talk about it in the comments asking me to come out with this video. I got a pre-production copy of the suppressor. I have run the absolute shit out of it to make sure that it was good to go for you. Of course, there's no better way to test a suppressor than to run it at Clint Smith's legendary urban rifle course. And in the standard urban rifle course, you're going to pump an entire case of 5.56 through your rifle, whether you want to or not. You could be standing there on the line crying. Clint will threaten to stab you in the neck if you don't shoot that damn gun. You are going to run it hard. Fantastic way to test a new suppressor. I started with the Tavor X95 Micro and the Xeno mount to see how well the Sierra 5 would run with a short-barreled rifle. Sierra 5 can, you can get it with a Xeno mount and a muzzle device, or for like about a hundred bucks more or less, you can get it with a chemo adapter. Briefly, I said I'd visit on this, the Xeno mounts onto a Xeno compatible muzzle device. These look like conventional muzzle devices, except they've got larger threads near the base of the device. The Xeno mount goes over the flash hider and screws onto those larger threads at the base. The neat part is those large threads turn in the opposite direction of the smaller threads used to attach your muzzle device to your barrel, which means you're not gonna accidentally unscrew your brake or your flash hider if carbon fouling makes your suppressor difficult to detach and you need to exert a lot of leverage to get it loose. Now the chemo adapter on the other hand, a rock solid quick attach and quick detach muzzle device that's taking off to be one of the most popular, if not the most popular suppressor attachment device for a rifle today. There are many manufacturers making third party chemo adapters for all different flavors of rifles. You love to see it. Now you can't go wrong with the Xeno or the Chemo, but I'll chime in here and explain why I went with the Xeno. First of all, it's a little bit cheaper. Second, I like the counter screwing system. I think it's really clever, but perhaps most importantly, the Xeno version, even though it's slower than the Chemo version, is gonna be smaller and lighter. Specifically, the Sierra 5 with the Xeno mount is gonna be 2.1 ounces lighter at 13.3 ounces and just 5.7 inches long versus six and a quarter inches long and 15.4 ounces for a Sierra 5 with a Chemo mount. I mean, it's up to you. You can do smaller, lighter, and slower, and cheaper, and go with the Xeno mount, or you can go with quicker and more popular and just get the chemo mount. It really doesn't matter. Both options completely kick ass. That's the best part about the hub mounting system. If you get like the chemo and you wish you would have gotten a Xeno, then all you have to do is buy the Xeno mount and the muzzle device for it, and you can just swap them. It's that easy. You don't have to buy a whole new can. Anyways, back to Thunder Ranch. I kicked off the course with the Xeno mount on the short barreled X95 Micro Tavor. Which was just awesome. The entire combo was amazing. Sound was great, and the Sierra 5 added almost no weight or length to the gun. It was virtually a perfect addition, even though the Tavor factory brake itself was a little bit tricky to remove, requiring 
two different nuts to be counter screwed with two different wrenches. Holy shit. Whoa. All this talk about screwing in nuts, there's an obvious sex joke in here, but I'm just choking on it. I swear to God, if you get in the comments and you bitch about the fact that I don't do meter readings, it's because it's virtually pointless. Don't get lost in the numbers, guys. If you buy from a reputable manufacturer, you'll get a can that's quiet. I promise you this. And I'm telling you, if you're talking about like a couple of decibels off, which is what most of these margins are with comparable suppressors, you're not going to be able to hear the difference either way. And everybody tests these numbers differently. So if you look at a white paper from suppressor company A versus suppressor company B, Suppressor company B did it six feet from the muzzle and A did it behind the muzzle and this guy used this ammo and it was this humidity out. Don't get bogged down in that. Don't look at numbers, look at the features. But yeah, the Sierra 5 ran great on the Tavor even though I did get a little bit of blowback out of the opposite side ejection port that gave me carbon bukkake and my asshole cameraman, Ryan, didn't say a word about it for well over an hour. So there's plenty of footage of me running around Thunder Ranch with a black streak on my face. How does the uh, the suppressor sound, guys? It's not bad. Not, not bad? bad. Yeah, it sounds good. Woo! <laughs> uh, it's a little toasty. It's a little toasty. Felt it through these gloves. Jamie, you got something. Why, why would you not f***ing tell me that? Why would you not f***ing tell- why would you just let me f talk to the camera? God, I wanna f <laughs> Brutalize you. For day two of Urban Rifle, I ran the Sierra 5 on a 16-inch Smith & Wesson M&P AR-15. And that actually sounded really good. I mean, just adding a few inches barrel changes the tone a lot, at least for me. And you might even be able to hear the difference between the two in this video. Yeah. Good hit. Finger straight safety on move. I thought it sounded great, really on both platforms. But you can't really overstate the effect that the length and the weight of a suppressor has on your performance with a rifle, especially when you're running a 16 inch gun with a longer barrel, especially when you're running a carbine course. It's nice being able to maneuver your AR with the Sierra 5, or it could be a little bit more difficult with like a larger or a longer and heavier suppressor. I ran it actually through one of my favorite drills at Thunder Ranch, Thunderville. It involves shooting from behind a wall full of these squarish holes. That's the fun thing about Urban Rifle. Clint has these creative gun uncle ideas like Thunderville where you really get to test the weapon system that you're bringing out. So if you're looking at the front side of Thunderville, all you can see are like these four-sided cutouts, but on the back side, you see the holes obviously, but there are also stairs, ladders, platforms, small obstacles to work around and Clint goes through and marks the different holes that you're going to use in each stage with a red flag so you don't know what position you're gonna to have to kind of contort into to make a hit during each course of fire. A lot of us just spend time in a flat range shooting into paper, steel, dirt mounds, whatever, but Urban Rifle truly tests you in what would be an urban environment, and that's where you kind of see the benefits of a reduced weight, smaller, shorter suppressor in addition to checking out how it sounds. But we didn't clean the Sierra 5 and we ran it pretty hard for two straight days of urban rifle, plus some plinking around the range, plus I used it in a few reviews whenever I got back. Yeah, one size fits all cans like the Primal, which I love, or the Silencer Co. Omega. They're great if you're gonna get just one can and that's it and you want it to do everything. 30 cal cans like the Sandman, the Nomad, the Surefire Socom 7.62, those perform even better than these Omni cans, although they narrow down your caliber selection a little bit. Yes, I think that 223 slash 308 cans are great buys. They're probably going to be the most popular format for the foreseeable future. However, if you're like me, you got a lot of ARs, or you're heavy on guns in 5.56, the Sierra 5 is just smaller, lighter, cheaper, and tougher than a field sobriety test. And that's something to think about. 
Of course, if you're going to pick one up, you should go check out our sponsor, Silencer Shop, but you're going to have to back order it because these cans are still sold out at the time of this video, but it's worth the wait. Trust me on that. Guys, thanks as usual for watching. Thank you to your online shooting sports superstore, Top Gun Supply, as well as where we got all of our ammo from for this video, Ventura Munitions. We've been partnered up with them for years. They're great, but so are you. We'll see you next time.